Looks like we're ready to go. You guys ready? Ready to go. go. All righty. So, hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, William Agnew. Frank Smith. Frank Smith. <laughs> He forgot. Josh, really. you, guys, you guys should all be very familiar with who I am by now. <laughs> exactly. So we want to welcome all of you guys who are with us. We want to welcome you guys who are back with us. If you remember the last time we tried this, we had some technical difficulties. So hopefully we're going to get through this no problem this time, guys. Uh, we are coming live from Sailor Repair School. So what we're going to do is we're going to train you guys on some topics, some very specific topics that we talked about in the email we sent you. Uh, this is the five fatal mistakes that most people make or most business owners make when starting a cell phone repair business. So we're going to go through that very specific and he hit each one of those. So Frank, Josh, and myself, we're going to go through that and talk about that. All right. So what I want to do is welcome you guys. Uh, you guys got anything you want to say before we actually get started? No, no, no. Just appreciate everybody joining us tonight. You know, it's going to be some exciting learnings. And this, this tonight is really going to kind of wrap up the entire free training mini series that we've been putting together over the last week and a half. Right. Also, I want to kind of point out real quick, as we're going through some of the material, feel free to throw out some questions. Even though you throw them out early, we'll get to them at the end or whatnot. Right. I'm sorry, Frank. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so you threw me out there. Right? That's <laughs> all the point. But even just go ahead and put the questions out there. We'll try and answer them right away if it's actually uh, pertinent to what we're talking about at the time. But if it's not, we're going to get to it at the end. So feel free to put as many questions as possible here. And that's one thing I wanted to say. So before we get started, guys, uh, we want to test to make sure our visuals and our microphone is working properly. So what I want you guys to do right now is if you look at the chat in the top right side of your, uh, of, of your screen, you guys should see a chat. So go ahead, everybody, tell us where you're from. Um, and tell us that you can hear us. So if you can hear us, say yes. Everybody write yes in your chat. Um, and if you can see us, write yes. Okay, if you can't, let us know so we'll know to correct some of the, you know, whatever the problem may be. So go ahead and uh, do that if you guys, if you guys will. And don't be shy. All right. Right. Carolyn yeah. says yes. Good to hear from yes, you guys. All yes. right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Love when technology awesome. works correctly. I know, right? right? Now we're gonna get. Well, we've been all nervous after the last <laughs> one. We had, by the way, uh, our last webinar that we did a few weeks ago, we had over a thousand people try to register for the webinar. Exactly. And it crashed our servers. So uh, we didn't realize at the time that it wasn't set up right. So that's why we're a little on edge tonight to make sure that we're good. Exactly. Right. Exactly. We got a lot of things we want to talk about. So we're gonna go ahead and get in. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to pass it over to uh, either Josh or Frank, um, and they're going to dive into the very first topic that we're going to be talking about. So, Josh, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Yeah, so if you've had a chance to be – so, again, all week we've been putting together a, a training series because when we did our webinar last month, we did a questionnaire. Actually, it was the exact same questionnaire that we did this webinar. And what we realized is that so many of you are not in the business or in different on different stages. So what we wanted to do is start at the beginning to really introduce you to the opportunity to help fill in the blanks. But video one started with what we know, what we see every day, why people are not successful in this business, and it's the five fatal mistakes that we make in the cell phone repair business. And actually, it could be any business, but specifically in the cell phone repair business. Exactly. Right. So tonight, we're really going to be driving those home. And just to kind of recap for those of you that hadn't seen it. So the way we did it, we started with the five big mistakes last time. Yeah. We talked about the cell phone repair opportunity and why this is the hottest opportunity Very to hot. do on your own. It <laughs> doesn't require hardly any investment whatsoever as of today. You know, um, it's and it has a really large potential for return. Exactly. Um, we went to the second one. We talked about the profit formula where we really drove home how profit works in cell phone repairs and how you can really put together a worksheet for yourself to come up with what your numbers are and what works best for you. And to help identify exactly where you are. Exactly, because process. everybody's in different stages. Exactly. And sometimes, you know, uh, what's a stage for one person isn't necessarily the stage for the next exactly. person. Exactly. And we all have different goals. Exactly. So that's what video two was. It was the profit formula. Mm -hmm. Video three was what we call the seven-step blueprint, really laying things out for you. And it was taking the pre-work that we did in the first two videos and helping you start to formulate your plan. Exactly. So tonight, we're going to go back to part one. Right. And we're going to talk about those big five mistakes. So I'm going to recap them real quick. Mistake number one is feeling like that you can't do anything. You can't move forward because you're not an expert, so it's hard to be successful. Mistake number two, not valuing your time properly. Mistake number three, not understanding how to market and advertise effectively. Which is huge. Huge. Effectively. That's a big one. Huge. Yeah, that's a big right? one. Uh, number five, not having tools and systems to back you up. 
So we're going to do a deep dive in this, but I do want to let you know, so at the end of this, we're going to be doing a Q&A session where we're really going to take your questions, but even throughout, understand that this is interactive. Uh, we're here to answer your questions and to really fill in the blanks and to help inspire you to make the changes in your life that can actually move you to the next level that you know in your heart that you want to do. Exactly. So what I'd say, guys, make sure you got pen, make sure you have uh, paper, right? Write down any questions that may come up during the presentation or the training so that you can ask them d during the Q&A. So make sure you're taking notes, writing these things down because, again, this is free information, free learning, and we want to answer any question, like Josh said at the end of this, uh, that you guys may have, any right. burning questions. So make sure you're taking notes. Right, exactly. So we're going to deep dive into mistake number one. Most people don't feel like they're an expert, so they can't be successful, right? Now, in the video I taught, really where we see that is it, it number one, and we're going to go into a lot of different topics, but number one is feeling like you have to know everything in order to move forward. Right. You guys want to chime in on that one? I yeah, could go ahead and try. I mean, we, we, we did that little yeah, side. We did that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so what I'd like to comment on that is nobody's, nobody's born an expert. Yeah, All right. You're not born into this world an expert on anything. So realistically, what it always takes is training and just the willingness. You know, nobody is born knowing how to play a phenomenal football game. And what we kind of, like, what I want to point out is here is this is like some of uh, the, the repair community is, is small. And the ability to lean on each other is, you know, is, is very easy. Also, you're not alone out there. Mm -hmm. And I think what we'll get into, and I don't know if we want to cover this right away, but um, at the chat. There, oh, there, there's a support <laughs> network to where you're not in it alone. So if things do happen, you know, you can call somebody, you know. Um, if repairs go wrong, there's, there's people there to help you out. And we'll go into some of those support pieces in there and um, it, it's really about just getting started. You don't have to be an expert ever. And exactly. nobody starts as an expert. Well, I want to share a story. So all week we've been really big on sharing stories, sharing my yeah. background. And Frank is my business partner. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, we really, uh, I love that he's part of these stories. So I, I want to share a story of how when we first started our repair business. So this ties perfectly into yeah. not knowing everything. So literally, I remember, you know, we, we did all of the, the business pre-work. We got the store open, you know, and if you remember, we did an executive suite model. So we got the store open, and the first day we had a customer come in. You know, I had practiced on a couple of small phones, but I wasn't an expert by any means. But a customer came in and brought a phone in that I hadn't practiced on. And I'm talking to this customer, trying to figure out what the problem is with the device, and I couldn't figure out how to get the freaking battery cover off of the phone. And let me comment on this. To show how not an expert or Josh was, this was a flip phone. <laughs> he came into the back and asked me, he's like, hey man, you know how to take this apart? And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. Right? But that was the first step for us to know that we don't have to know everything. You just push forward. Right? And we will figure out the answers as we go. Right. So, what you do need is you need some support resources that makes it easier. There's way more available today than there was when you know we started our business back in 2008. Right. You know that we didn't have. But I see so many people get paralyzed by not knowing right. or the, what we call paralysis analysis. That right. when you need the next step exactly. in order to move forward, you got to fill in all the blanks. So the other big one around technical, or what I would say is saying that I don't know business. I don't know how to do this. Like maybe, maybe I'm tech savvy. I've worked on computers. I've worked on you know something. I, I know how to work my hands real well. But I don't know business at all. And you know that's not to interrupt. But that's kind of what you find, right? You typically find people who are very good at technically, and they're like, right. I'm kind of scared of business, or business kind of frightens me, right? Or you find people who are very good at business, but the technical kind of frightens me. So you know it. You know just to add to that, it I just want to throw that in right there. It is a wide spectrum, exactly. Right. So real quick, I just want to chime in. I see a question from Joel. Great opportunity to point out when you're making comments obviously just mark them there's a little selection you can make on there where you can mark them as a question we're gonna get to those in the Q&A section once we're done with the training portion so just make sure great job Joel appreciate you doing that we're gonna come back and address your question uh, just keep doing that if you have questions mark them with the red question box and, and we're gonna get back to and you. I'm gonna try to answer some people's questions over here on the fly so go ahead and ask some questions and I'll try to answer right some right right so um, yeah 
I forgot. Actually, I threw it off. Over <laughs> <laughs> so we went technical and business. In business. Right. So yeah. some, sometimes people really don't understand the business aspect of it. And I, William was kind of bringing the light is either it's kind of one or the other. You're very comfortable with technical but not business or, you know, vice versa. And uh, I think some of the things with the business pieces are, you know, they're – we're very familiar with the cell phone repair industry. We've been in it for, I want to say... Since uh, 2008. Yeah, 2008. So do the math. Yeah, I mean, it's quick. been a decent amount of time. So yeah. we've actually done, and this goes back to learning from other people's mistakes. We've done a lot of mistakes, so we've put out a lot of information in some of our training, so you don't make some of the same mistakes. And also, too, with businesses, people, I don't know anything about business, people think it takes a lot of money to start a business or whatnot, which there's That's actually ways to get started with little to virtually no money whatsoever. Um, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Usually that's a big barrier with yeah. people. They think, you know, I don't know anything about business and they always hear that term. It takes money uh, to make money, which is absolutely not the case. It just right. takes a desire and a Right, drive. absolutely. And if it does so, take money, it doesn't mean it needs to be your money. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. You know, it's going to be his money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't need to be a, a lot yeah. of money. You know, you know, money where you need to go borrow money from no. somebody or anything like that. Right, Absolutely exactly. Not. One of the other big things that we see is I've never done anything like this before. Right. That's another hurdle that really comes into feeling like you're not an expert so you can't be successful. And, you know, what I would say is, so it's not really related to this 100%, but I have a daughter that just turned one. And she's trying to figure out how to walk right now. Right, right. She's never walked before. Right. Right? right. But you know what she's doing? She's standing up wobbly legs, falling. <laughs> you know? Right. She's frustrated, but she's trying. Exactly. Right. And she's trying with baby steps. Exactly. That's why we call it baby steps. Right. You don't need to know it all. Right? And you've never had to do something like this before in order to move forward. Exactly. Well, if, if you guys ever watch prior videos, I mean, myself and Josh, we were in real estate. So cell phone repair was absolutely on the other side of the spectrum. I hadn't even thought about it. You know, so we never did this before. And it was one of those things that it is. It's baby steps, you know. And we knew nothing about technical. We had a little bit of business experience, you know, just from our prior backgrounds, but not in the cell phone repair industry. It was all, you know, we went from selling, you know, $250,000 houses, $500,000 houses to uh Forty dollar trackball. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was yeah. a complete different shift. curve and right. a shift, and it was a mindset shift also. And we were not an expert. Yeah, we knew absolutely nothing, and, yeah. and there wasn't a support network either we, at all. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Was, it was it was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. So you can get started. Like I said in the video, the one-eyed man is king in the land of the blind because all you need to do is be able to see a little bit. Right. You don't need to know the whole road. In fact, we were kind of talking about this earlier, and you know, I would say, like, if you're planning on taking a trip to Disneyland from wherever you are, right? you know what I don't know? I don't know every turn on how I'm going to get to Disneyland. Right. Right? Right. But what I do know is what my destination is. Right. Now, I might, there might be some do, detours and things that happen along the road right. while I'm going. But that's not going to stop it's you not from going stop me from getting, getting to Disneyland. Disneyland. Exactly. Right? So exactly. it's the same thing. This is a journey. Do not put roadblocks and obstacles in your way. And we see that all the time. All the time. In fact, if you had the chance to watch um, the case study that we had shared with Gary. Gary. Great case study. You if know. you haven't seen that, by the way, go back and watch it. The case study of Gary is probably in your email. Yeah, it should be in your email. And... For him, that's a perfect example of someone that really, I mean, he said, he you know, is almost 50 years old, has no technical experience whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Right? And in under four months, he went from being in a corporate job, working 60, working 60, hours, 60 a week. hours a week, yep. just getting burned out with no experience on this stuff whatsoever. And under four months, he's now, him and his wife are full-time doing this from home. They have a home-based business, and they started it with a little, like, next to nothing. He's the gadget guy in his neighborhood. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually started, I don't know if you guys touched base on this, but I was in the chat thing here. Yeah. He literally was going to his son and people that were 20 years old for any technical advice. And now, within four months, this individual is the gadget guy in the neighborhood. From... From knowing nothing, and I know my parents are that way. Hey man, what's going on with this phone? So the guy saying, "Hey, can you do this for me on the phone?" To actually fixing phones in four months is absolutely that's it's phenomenal. incredible. Yeah, you know? that's phenomenal. So you can do it. And again, you need the right support network right. and resources. If you listen to Gary's story, you know he realized that he his son tried to do it. He couldn't do it, you know, on his own. They looked for the right type of training, resources, and support 
to help you move forward. And of course, that's what we're here to do, right? So big objection number two, not valuing your time. And as I taught in the video, what I see all the time people do is not charging appropriately for repairs. Right. So that means undercharging because you're basing everything on price or not actually getting the value that you should for your time. Right. And it's very, very common for people to say, well, you know, I, I wasn't able to fix the, the device. Right, Something right. came up, you know, or uh, like actually the example is, this is actually a better one. The example is you get a customer's device, screen repair. Mm -hmm. So I do the screen repair, but while I'm working on it, I find another issue on the phone. Right? The customer decides she doesn't want to spend that money for me to fix the other issue. Mm -hmm. Right? Do I refund her 100% or does she pay me for my time? Right. Right? Now, I will tell you that obviously it is up to you to run your business the way you decide to do best. Right? Customer service is paramount. We believe that wholeheartedly and we teach that wholeheartedly. Absolutely. But you need to value your time. You need to do things and make sure that you're getting paid for your time and that you're not being taken advantage of all the time because that is the surest way to go out of business quickly or to not hit your goals because you're you're handicapping yourself by not allowing that money. That's time that you're taking away that you could have been working on something that generated profit in exchange for not getting profit. Right. Now, with that being said, what I will say is there's a learning curve to this thing. So when we first started the business, we didn't always charge bench fees. Right. No. Right? If there was something that we had never worked on before, Bet your sweet cheeks that we would work on it for free to try to figure it out. Well, explain what a bench. I mean, just quickly explain yeah, what a bench, bench fee right. is, because somebody might not know what a yeah, bench fee. Yeah, a bench fee is. It's really what we call, you know, just to charge for our time. Some people call it diagnostic fees. So realistically, when you go in and you bring your car to AutoZone, they typically do it for free. But that's really what it is. It's to take a look at it, whether it's not repairable, or not. Sometimes customers decide, nah, that's too expensive. I don't want to repair it. But you have to get paid for what we have to get paid for. And that's for valuing time. your time. Exactly. Yeah. Because, and another thing about that is, too, is uh, with our customers, we tell them you get what you pay for. So we're going to try our best to get that repaired right. due to the fact that you're paying for it. Right. Now, right. if I was a guy that wasn't going to charge for my time, well, let me see here. Yeah, sorry, bud, can't fix it. You get what you pay for. Right, right, you right, know? right. So right. that's a bench fee in a nutshell. Absolutely. Exactly. So, so can I hit this next one? So moving on and uh, not valuing your time, guys, the next one is one that I'm really passionate about, and it's not learning and earning at the same time. And a lot of people feel, and, and, and this kind of goes back to the first one where it's a roadblock for a lot of people because they don't feel like they can learn and earn at the same time, especially in this industry or this business. A lot of people feel like they got to learn everything first before they even go out and start making money. And that's, the, that's one of the biggest misconceptions I've actually seen in this industry and in this business. People feel like, hey, we get this question all the time. How long is it going to take me to train? Right? right? We get that question all the time, and we know what that spurs from. A lot of times that spurs from people thinking that they can't start actually implementing what they're learning and getting results and getting the, the, the fruits of their labor, so to speak before they actually finish training. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions it is. That, that we actually see. You can learn and earn at the same time. I got, a, I got a quick story for that, too. And now we know, typically we always focus on um, cell phones, right? But we added gaming consoles onto uh, our facility years ago. But there was no training out there. So no. this is really how we went about it. I had this harebrained scheme idea. <laughs> don't right? say scheme. No, don't say it, scheme. it wasn't a scheme. It wasn't a scheme. It was like, a bad it word. Wasn't a scheme, it, was, it was R and D. It was research and development. So yeah. I look at Josh like, hey man. I was like, you know what? We should do gaming consoles. And Josh was like, oh man, I don't know. We don't know how to do it. I was like, yeah, but we'll figure it out. And he's like, well, we need to learn about it. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is what we do. We get our customers to bring them in. And then what we do is we learn on on their units, and if we can't fix them, and those are the cases where we don't charge. But the thing about it is, is we figured out along the way because we got on-the-job training. We've seen real-world application and what actually went wrong. We got to the point where we perfected the best gaming console repair there was, and obviously we started teaching that as well. And it would have never, ever, ever happened if we wouldn't have took that first step to earn while we learn 
but fair and ethical to the customer at Absolutely. the same time. Right. So, and you weren't an expert, by the way. Which is the which is number <laughs> one at, at, at all? one. Yeah. At all. That's but, number one. You're an now, expert. But now, now I am an expert on the gaming consoles. Right. When we first got into it, no, no way. Exactly. There was people that actually did know way more than what I did, but I did learn from some of those people, yeah. and then I was able to kind of take the best practices and of all these the, and create this phenomenal yeah. affair. So. so to bring that full circle one more time, this is the one of the hugest mistakes actually that it hurts me personally when I see students do this. <laughs> is not it's failing to earn while you learn. So you don't have to know it all. Yeah. Right? It's number one again. You don't have to know it all to get started. You can get started just perfect your sales skills as you're going and do the right thing by your customer, but right. there's no problem with you practicing on customers' devices. Right. You don't have to figure it all out. There's way too many different devices and way too many repairs for you to know it all. I'm going to tell you that right now. So let's move on to the right, next one. Exactly. We'll in. Yeah. So another big one is wasting time on YouTube. Oh, my gosh. I'm just dropping the page. <laughs> <laughs> no. This one is actually a big deal because we have this conversation <laughs> so often with potential students because... What happens is you go onto YouTube, you know, and YouTube is a tremendous resource because it's there's a, great, a lot of great it, yeah, information. It's a great resource. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of great information there, right? I mean, some of our information is out there. So right, there's right, great information right, out right, there. Right, right. But the problem with it is you don't know the good stuff from the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is you end up wasting a lot of time on things that aren't necessarily the right way to do things, especially when it comes to technical repairs. This is a big time waster. And I'll tell you, having stores... What we see is a big time waster is you don't want your employees using YouTube as a resource because they end up watching videos of kittens playing with fur balls or some, yeah. something else that gets them off track from what they need to be doing as opposed yeah. to focusing on taking care of your customers' devices. You know, it's one thing I've learned, and uh, you know, if you guys are familiar with me, you know that teaching is what I've always done in the past. And one thing I, I, I do love about YouTube is it is data. It is information. It's, it's great information. The thing is... It's only information, so I'm. Uh, it's data. How does it go? It's it's only data. If it, when it's organized, it becomes information. Information. Because now you're informed. Yeah, you're informed. But when it's not organized, it's just data, right? And that's the problem with YouTube. A lot of times, like Josh saying, kind of piggyback on what you're saying, it, you waste so much time just because the data is all over the place, right? And the problem is, it's not. You're not really learning properly because learning requires subsequent. That's step-by-step step learning objectives and the right way to receive and internalize the information. So if you're not doing that correctly, you're not, you're not maximizing your learning potential and possibility. So that's the problem that YouTube, YouTube's great in terms of data, certain specific things, but when you're really trying to learn and you're really trying to educate yourself, YouTube is not the place uh, that you want to do that, and th and it requires, uh, and this requires. Well, it's, it's a time suck. Yeah, it is. It comes yeah, back to not is. valuing your time because it it's is. a time suck. For sure, you know? for sure. It, it not the knock YouTube to because it does have its benefits as a resource, yeah, but at the same time, before you, you know, before yeah. we even had the online and the employees that I that I've had in the past, that was a real problem. That's actually one of the inspirations that we had to kind of think about doing some of these online training and uh, having this library having of videos a, a repair library, it's due yeah. to the fact that it you know my whole thing is is to have a repair done in a half hour an hour max and if you run into an issue that you can't find surfing the web takes a lot longer and I'm gonna pull it back to the employee perspective you know I think you were saying that too is the employees they kinda start looking for something and then they're like well, yeah they get and, and, and I'm like what are you what are you doing it's like oh yeah I'm doing some research and I'm like but you're watching vines, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. So, yeah. you know, it, it is a huge time waster. And um, every now and then, you you can get something out of it. But for the most part, you got to sift through the, you know what, to get to the real goal. Exactly. Yeah, which yeah, is like a total that. time. So, you got to sift waster. through the yeah. trash yeah. to get to the truth. It's right? not productive. That's and then this, yeah, and then, and to right. relate, I know, I know where you're going. To relate that yeah. back to this industry, this business, guys, productivity is everything. When you're trying to hit certain goals, certain marks with customers, and to waste minutes, hours, probably even days on something where you're trying to find the right thing. It's just, it's just totally non-productive. So. Absolutely. So big mistake number three, not understanding how to market and advertise effectively. Right. And this is a huge one. In the video, we really talked about measuring um, ROI, you know, being able to track 
what you're spending money on. If you're spending money, you need to know what you're tracking, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is really relying on one source. So we teach a lot of really effective methods to get started for free. Right. Right. And in fact, yeah. during the this training series, we gave you some some of those gems we gave, we gave on what to do. But once you get the phone ringing and you're making money, the biggest mistake that people make is relying on that one source to continue to bring you traffic. Right. Because if that changes, and I'll give you an example. Even when you're paying, if I'm paying for advertising on Google or I'm ranked on Google or whatever it is, Google changes an algorithm, my business is right. gone right. overnight. Right. And another story too, you know, for um, this, this happened to me personally is not that I relied solely on Craigslist, but if I had, I would have probably been out of business a lot quicker um, if it was. But I had all these multi uh, avenues, you know, I had Google, Facebook, and all these different ways, you know, guerrilla marketing to where that's how I drove traffic. It took just a few individuals that there's actually programs out there with Craigslist that can auto find you, and then you get to the point where your IP address gets flagged instantly, and now if you solely rely on Craigslist, you're done. Right. That because right. and a lot of people that's the biggest mistake they make because Craigslist is so easy it's free and it, it is it's a monster to generate revenue for free but don't rely on it. don't put all your eggs in one basket so, right. it's eggs you know, in like, one basket like what your mother yeah said. exactly I would tell you the other big thing that I like to drive home is if you are in a place where you're spending any kind of money on advertising please track what you're spending versus Excellent what point. you're getting Excellent you need point. to get what we call ROI it's a return on investment for us we like to look for a two to one. Right, so for every dollar that you spend, you want to see two coming back in right. at a minimum. Hopefully, it's a three, three plus, right. but at least a two to one. You know, and in fact, we were we were coaching some students um, a few weeks back, and there was a student that you know was sending out a lot of postcards. Right, right. The problem with with what we do in our space of repairs. So let's just address that. Right. Eight hundred pound gorilla in the room mm -hmm. is this is an emergency room service, right? I, I would I would ask you to type in the box the last time that you've been just randomly looking for an emergency room, right? <laughs> right? Nobody does. You don't look for it till you need it, right? Right. So the problem with spending a lot of money on traditional advertising is nobody saves your postcard hoping they're going to break their phone, right? Right. Or, oh, I'm going to put this urgent care thing on my freezer, uh, you know, hoping I break my leg. Cause, you know, I mean, right. like, nobody really does that unless right. there's an incentive to do it. Right. So that's the problem, number one, with the traditional advertising. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't work, yeah. right? But when you spend money on it, you need to have, even if it's a you know a, a low tech way of tracking, you need to have something that says, okay, I've sent out X postcards to this area, I've spent this amount of dollars, and these are the phone calls that I'm getting on this, right? right? So now you know, okay, I'm getting some leads because then you can see if the problem is, is it the lead generation or is it your ability to close the leads? Right. And you need to be able to segment those so you know that. The dollars I spent here are coming in from here. Right. So now I can fix my problem. I can fix the problem of, well, it was a crappy campaign that I didn't get any leads generated. Right. Or, man, that actually we had killer leads on that thing, but my sales sucked because I didn't actually close anybody and convince them to let me use the, you know, to use my service. Exactly. So, you know, we dive much, much deeper into that into the business sections of training, but I want you to understand that yeah. that is so important. You really need to track what your return on investment is when you get into marketing. And you need to advertise marketing. I always drive home that no matter what business you're in, realize that you're in the business of marketing. Of marketing. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. And that's a that's an excellent segue to go into number four. Num number uh let's see, where are we at? We at number four, number yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. Number, number four, four now. now. Number yeah. four. Okay. Well I was gonna jump ahead, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> good thing I called you. Yeah, good thing you did. Well, anyways, I just I guess I'll go into number four. <laughs> you might as well. Do. But it, not creating value and legitimacy. A, a lot of this is what I hear a lot with people who start, uh, especially from mobile uh, home-based businesses. You know, they they feel that they absolutely need a business, and especially if they're working with little to no money. One of the biggest roadblocks is they think that, you know, how do I actually create the, the right image? You know, is people really going to take me seriously because I'm working out of my home? And I always like to kind of refer back to it. It was really cool that uh, Gary was able to stop by because typically, even in my mind, sometimes I was, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, maybe I wouldn't do it out of my home. But Gary took that, ran with it, embraced it, and actually showed that you can be legitimate 
even working at your home, working, strictly from you home. know, I, he has customers coming to his house. to his house, yeah. and I like what he said. And it, this is really becoming true because I do it myself, especially when I go out to restaurants and eat. I like to keep my money local, and I, yeah, I and I want yeah. and I want to support the little guy and the local guy. Yeah. You know, and it's becoming more and more of a trend. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't be afraid to get out there. Just because you're starting at home, and then obviously too, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we talk about, and there's a lot of me and some of these programs that we're about to uh, talk to you guys about about how to do that, mm -hmm. and it's relatively easy, and also again, it doesn't take any money, uh, very to little no money. So uh, we call one thing is it might take some sweat equity. That's right. just a little bit of your time. Yeah, trading some time, trading so, some time for where your money would go. Exactly. So that's a huge one, and again, you know, it it really is about creating the right image. So make sure you take the time to put together a brand. I mean, it doesn't have to be some ridiculous image or brand. Right. You know, don't spend thousands. And, and like I shared in the video, a lot of times, depending on what your goals are, it doesn't make sense to go for a federal trademark or anything like that. Those are very, you know, just involved processes that can be really expensive. If you're just going to be a local business, even if you got, you know, 10 repair stores locally, if you're not planning on doing things in other states or internationally, why trademark it? This doesn't make sense. Right. You know, unless you know that you're doing something to expand to be a national brand and you really have to protect that brand. Right. And there's a time where it makes sense. But I see students get caught up on this all the time. You know, they put the steps ahead of taking action instead of just moving through it and, and doing what needs to be done. So the second big one I would say is, you know, people are asking all the time, well, it seems like this is a competitive space. Mm -hmm. You know, and it depends on where you are. Some areas like where we're at here in Phoenix, there's almost 80 repair shops here. Mm -hmm. So it is competitive and there's new people coming into the market all the time, yeah. you know. So it's there you have to do something to separate yourself. If you're in an area that doesn't have competition, great. But you better get the money while you can because it ain't going to be long before someone else figures it out. Well, if they see right? you making money, then yeah, of course yeah. it just makes So I, I and I tell you I, I look at this in two different ways. It really is a half full versus half empty glass sort of perspective because if you're getting into the market and there's competition, well, that just means that it works, right? right? Someone has proven that it works and there's a demand in your marketplace. I can tell you this, guys. This industry is extremely underserved yes. based, based yeah. on the demand for the need of what we do. It is extremely underserved. And so, it, so the upside is is a lot. It's ridiculous. So there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of upside in this business. So don't think that it's getting so uh, diluted or there's no way to make money. Of, you know, just because you see other people doing it, there's still a lot of demand. If you think about how many people actually have, you know, we talk about this statistic all the time. You know, there's more people with sell mobile devices than toilets in, right. in the United States, and that's just a international. Oh, internationally, yeah. <laughs> sorry. But that's just an idea of the demand, and there's we see it every day. So so many times we see it where people we still have situations where we talk to people and people aren't even aware. Customers aren't even aware that cell phone repair or mobile device repair, not just cell phone guys, yeah, but mobile tablets, device repair exactly. is an op is an option for their broken units. There's a lot. We it's still an educational thing that we have to educate the consumer that that is a viable option for them if they break something. So there's still a lot of education that has to be done from the consumer uh, standpoint that they need to know that this is an option for them. So you know the upside is still there, guys. So don't don't think that this thing is and based on what you see that there's no demand for what you got. What we're talking about right now is huge demand. And I want to pick you back on that just that small point that you made right. and is um, the public, even though it's underserved right now, there's a large, massive amount of the public that doesn't even know that this exists. Exactly. So competition it can actually be a good thing due to the fact that it helps educate the public more and more and more. Absolutely. So it's grown. It's but, $5 billion industry. But you have to take, take into consideration most of the time those people that you see are getting such a small piece. Exactly. Such a small piece. And there's an individual uh, in a, uh, that I've worked with and I can't say his name but he worked uh, in a very, very small, small town. I want to say this town was under 7,000 people and um, in particular, he started mobily. And I was actually like, hey, you know what? You're probably going to have to start off slow. But he eventually opened up a, a store in a town of 7,000 people. That's small. 
You know, so it can be done no matter what the size is, and it Absolutely. goes back to value proposition, what you do. You know, maybe maybe it's something a little bit more than cell phone repair. Maybe it's you know accessories as well and certain things like that. So you just got to think outside the box, yeah. just just the just the tad. And if you already have yeah. an existing business that fits well with this, it's just a no-brainer, guys. It is because you already have a built-in customer base, and I can almost guarantee you, every one of your customers has a mobile device, right. whether it's a tablet. A cell phone, maybe two cell phones, a laptop. Everybody and their mama these days have mobile devices. Right. So if you're in the biz, if you're in business already, it just makes sense to actually integrate something like this into your business to get more return. Right. But I want to bring it back to what the point of this was, which is failing to create legitimacy. Right. So right. you know, now that we've kind of talked through what the competition can look like and why it's actually not a bad thing to have it, realistically. That means you got to step your game up and really separate yourself from your competition. Exactly. Right? Exactly. One of the best ways to do that is by becoming legitimately certified, like honestly certified through a school that's certified to train you properly. And obviously, we've been big on the whole Board of Education push. Well, now. that's what we're celebrating right, right? now. Right? Exactly. So, yeah. That's why we've been doing all of these events because we just had to do the same thing because who are we to certify anybody? Right. We had to go become certified. So now we're able to certify. Exactly. Right? It's the same thing. We need to be legitimate. You need to be legitimate. You need to separate yourself from who's out there trying to slice up your piece of the pie. Because at the end of the day, what we see coming in the forefront, and actually we didn't dive too deep into this in that last uh, It's a good webinar. point. It's a good point, though. It's a good right? point to make. But at the end of the day, what we see coming on the forefront is there's a lot of changes happening in the industry right now. Right. There literally is a lot of states and provinces. I, I was in Texas a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I know there's a lot of cities in Texas that are requiring licensing now. Right. So to do cell phone repairs, you have to become licensed. And the natural progression is there will probably be an educational piece of that attached to that soon enough. Because there's so many shade tree operations out there that are ripping people off. I just heard a story of a, a repair. It was like a repair kiosk. That was stealing customers' phones. Right. They were taking customers' phones in, and they're in a mall. Right. Right. They're taking customers' phones in, swapping them out with junk phones. Right. You know, of course they got raided. Right. You know, but they were sell yeah. basically they were taking legitimate iPhones, giving them fake iPhones right. back, and then selling those iPhones in the secondary market for more money and charging the customer right. things. You know, so that's the kind of stuff that's going on because this is such a new industry; it isn't heavily regulated yet, but it's coming. It's coming. So guys. right now, the best way to prepare yourself is to take the appropriate steps and it's not hard or difficult and we'll get more into that yeah. how we're here to help It's not you hard or difficult you just got to take the right well, steps. It's and, all about taking the right steps. And this actually happened in real estate and uh, and it was back in the day and it really relates to this loan officers you really didn't have to have a whole lot of training as a loan officer. Now right now in this industry the training get in now before it gets to the point where they make the entry level extremely difficult. Now just because of the standards right now uh, the entry point are relatively low standard wise you know California like Josh has said and yeah, some other states Texas, there's more and more you know, states have board. been yeah. have been bringing this on now they've actually you know they're going to make changes to where it's going to be a little bit more difficult and this is a way for the states to actually make money so the bureaucracy and the red tape is not going to be as easy so get in now and get grandfathered in so this way you don't have to it, that's a competitive edge because what that's going to do is probably going to reduce the amount of people who actually get in for those of you who are actually worried about your competition. Right. And I always, I always relate it back to repair shops too. I don't remember the last time that anybody's had a car worked on, especially here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But when you have your car worked on, you'll notice that almost every repair shop is typically certified by you know ASE or something right. like Some that. So it's a big deal because it's big to the customer. They care about their cars. Customers care about their phones almost as much as they care about their cars. To be honest with you, they hate to be away from these things. So again, huge, huge separator. But you got to keep looking for interesting marketing ways and things that you can do to really separate yourself from your competition. We really talk a lot about unique selling propositions. You know, these are the things to think about. In fact, in the Seven Step Blueprint, we kind of dove into that for you to kind of work through the worksheet to figure out how. What are you doing different? Right. If you're just doing what Joe Schmo down the street does, why would customer Nancy choose you over Joe, right? Right. There needs to be a compelling reason and you need to really look different for some reason. And being properly certified, guys, is a huge one. Absolutely. That's a huge one. So Absolutely. That's, that's what we cover. So, so moving on, number five. Big mistake number five is not having the tools and systems to back you up. And when you, when you go to scale, so 
I would tell you, like, even if you're building a lifestyle business, you know, there's one thing to work for yourself and own your job, and there's another thing to own a business that allows you to have true flexibility where you know things aren't falling apart. You don't have to come back to a million fires when you get back, you know, from vacation or whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So the ability to do that comes down to the right kind of systems that you need in place. And we use that word, and it can sound big, especially if you're on a small level, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. It's small things like being able to retract, being able to track repairs. You know, if I helped, if I helped Stephen with the repair, and he has an issue, and he calls me two months later, can I find some paperwork or right. some documentation, or do I have a system I can log into to make sure that the IMEI on that phone, right. yeah, this is the right phone, and I did this on it, but you're bringing it in for this problem, so that's not really related. Right, because otherwise you end up losing money over the long term. So that's like one example of, of a system. Another huge one is when it comes to inventory management. I literally was just having a conversation with a potential student the other day. You know, they're doing well, but they don't have any sort of inventory tracking in place at all, and that makes it very, very challenging to scale or run your business because you. Don't know what you have in stock. I, I remember actually one of our uh, competitors here locally that opened up, you know, around the same time that we did. It was the same thing. You know, our business was completely systemized from day one. His, he had to run in the back room for an hour, hour and a half to try yeah. to figure out if he even had the right part. Mm -hmm. Guess where he is today? Out of business. Yeah. You know, yeah. so those are the kind of things that they are cancers in your business. And if you're going to run this the right way, take the time to put the right resources in place. And I, uh, uh, just real quick, this is even if you're mobile. This isn't just a storefront. You need to know exactly what is going on in your business, and because it talks about really, you know, goes into cost of goods. We talked about that before. What you're really profiting, what you're making, so you can really measure the health of the business and what you're doing. And plus, too, as a store owner, I like to know when people are stealing from me. <laughs> if you don't have inventory, you don't know when people are stealing from you. And that was one of the big reasons why some of these guys go out of business because they're getting robbed blind. Right. And then also, too, your technicians are, are breaking things and be like, oh, hold on a second here. Let me just go get this other part yeah. here and put this in, right? right? So there's all kinds of different things that you have to have to look at to know the health of your business. But guys, just to, time. Just to let exactly. you guys know, these things aren't difficult. Exactly. These no, things, it's just no. about understanding and knowledge and having the knowledge of them. So whereas sometimes we may make them sound a little difficult and a little challenging, it's less challenging than it is just knowing that it's what needs to be done. And a lot of times if you know it, if you're educated on it properly and you're getting the proper education and you're working with the right people who can guide you and teach you and coach you to do the right steps, then that's a lot of times is the biggest differentiator. It's not even it's not even difficult. So. Yeah, and real quick on that one, we're giving away one too, by the way. So we're giving away something to help track for you mobile or home based guys, or even if you don't have a point of sale system, we're giving one away. So we'll talk about that a little bit during the, uh, the Q and A. But exactly. and sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, I do really need one. Oh, just use this one, this one, or this one. Easy as that. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to it's be just that the knowledge. Yeah. It's just knowing. So I like to share the story of uh, a buddy of mine. He was an F-18 fighter pilot, and you know he he shared a story of how the mechanics at you know in the Navy were 18, 19 year old kids, young kids that would literally switch out. You know, on on F-18 fighter pilots, they would switch out large multi million dollar engines in a matter of just minutes. Like they could pull these things in there, and a team of two or three guys would jump on this thing and literally undo the engine and put a brand new engine in place or do a repair in a matter of just minutes, like a pit stop. And he was saying that the difference why they were able to do that is because they had the right tools, but they also had the right training to be able to implement right. and execute those tools the right way because if you have one without the other, you know, you're know, you firing on blank cylinders here and, and you know a lot of mistakes happen. And if it's good enough for the Navy, then there's probably something to it when it comes to tools and systems. right? So remember, the other piece of this is you need a support network, right? You don't have to be alone. There's so many questions, even for myself and, you know, and, for, and for Frank, like we are never alone either. You know, I'm, I'm constantly a part of mentoring groups and coaching programs. I mean, I practice what I preach. I'm always spending a lot of ridiculous amount of money on training yeah. and coaching because I know I don't have all the answers. And I want 
to be around people and that have answers and have resources and have systems to help me be able to do things better and more efficiently. And even even to piggyback on that, the amount of money that I've spent personally, you know, for continuing education, you know, some people think it may be traditional or not, but I mean, it goes back to practice what we preach. We're always learning, maybe at a different level. You know, but you know, we're still always. Me, I love to learn new things because it makes I get to disseminate that down to people who are just getting started. I've never, never really took some of the, you know, the value of education until I was able to actually start applying it and making money. That was really the big difference that really hit me after I got to school and college. I was like, oh yeah, I got my bachelor's degree. And I'm like, what now? Right. You know, I was actually, this one place that I was at, I was actually making more money. I had to actually take a pay cut because I got my bachelor's degree. And that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth about education and training until I started taking some of these other things and other skills that actually could produce dollars. Instead of putting me in debt, it actually made me money. You know? Exactly. So, right. you know, I just wanted to hit that point. This is kind of hitting a little nerve here because, you know, if it wasn't for some of these trainings, I won't be where I'm at today. Right. Absolutely, at man. I, I agree I, I wholeheartedly. I'm, I'm the same way. So it's huge. So to kind of recircle back, the five big mistakes that we see all the time, right? Failing or feeling like you always need to be an expert before you take action. Huge mistake. Don't let it get in the way. Not valuing your time. So there's a lot of different things we talked about, but make sure that you're always putting a value on your time. You are valuable. You're taking time away from your loved ones. Make sure you get you know, compensated accordingly for that. Uh, three, not understanding how to market and advertise effectively. This is so huge. I could talk for hours on this one. Which we do. Uh, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do that. <laughs> but this is so, so huge. It's so much more than just, you know, hanging a shingle or, you know, putting a Facebook page up. Those are great starts, but you got to really start putting some plans in place to grow your business so you can change your life. We teach for hours on that one, too. Exactly. Uh, Number four, big reason, not creating and valuing legitimacy. Make sure you're doing and taking the steps to separate yourself from the competition. In fact, one of the big things that I hear all the time when potential students call in, they're like, man, I'm so excited about this opportunity, but it seems like my market's saturated. Right. Right? right. And I always go back to what business do you see? I see new businesses opening up all the time in what I would consider saturated spaces. Right. Right? The... Um, and this is always fresh on my mind because I love sandwiches. Food, right? yeah, yeah. So Same Firehouse thing. Subs is something that I would have never thought, like, where, how in the world would Firehouse Subs pop up? You already got Subway, Blimpy, Porta Subs, right. Quizno. I mean, you can go on for hours about how many sandwich places there are, not to count the mom and pop operations yeah. that are out there. Yeah. But somehow Firehouse differentiated itself enough to where they created a demand and they've grown a multi-million, hundred million dollar yeah. Concept. Yeah. So five it can guys, be done. Five yeah, guys. In, in sandwiches. Yeah. So it can be done. There is no market that is too saturated. Nobody has it all figured out, especially in this space. Yeah. I will promise you that. That's why there is no major player in this space yet. It's because the opportunity is still on the table for the taking. Absolutely. So I don't know, that's a passionate one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw the passion. I saw the right. passion coming yeah. through. Big mistake number five. <laughs> Not having the right tools and resources available for you and trying to do it all by yourself. Huge, huge mistake. We gave you some reasons there, and now, obviously, we want to talk to you about how we help you solve all of these things. What are some of these you solutions? don't have to do that. Right. We figured out a lot of these things, and we're here to be to work with you as well. We right. want to help you succeed. Right. We do it every day. We've helped hundreds of students change their lives, and we really want to help you change your life if that's what you want to do. Right. So, what I would say is, there's a few big objections that I hear all the time, and I just want to take a minute to kind of talk through them, right? So we kind of talked about the market saturation one, right? right. Um, I don't know electronics is a big one. Neither did I. <laughs> or me, right? And Gary just shared his story with you. He had no clue about it. And in four months, he went from working at, you know, working for, at a burnout at a corporate job. 50 years old. Yeah, at 50 years old. In four months, he does it full time now. That's how he takes care of him and his family. Yeah. So you don't need to know it all. You just have to have the right resources. Um, this won't work where I'm located. Yeah. Hear this one, or will this work where I'm located? Now you can ask the question however you want to ask it. We hear it all the time. And I can tell you, we've had students from literally over 160 different countries. Frank, share your story. You actually had a story of a, um, a phone call with a student you were just talking to the other day, right? From, I think it was Nigeria. 
or yeah. some some really remote. I would, I always just remote say place in Africa, like Zimbabwe. Or yeah, it was remote. <laughs> it was but remote. anyway, it was actually um, it was a student that he he was going down there for like the Peace Corps or something like that, and uh, he had done our training, and he was driving down the road, and this country literally had no running water. You know, it, it, literally, it was primal, right? Cell phones. So he's driving down the road, and this guy's like, "Hey, hey!" You know, <laughs> stops the car, and the, and the guy's like, "Oh man, this is kind of suspect. What's going on here, right?" Yeah. And he's like, "Hey man, can you uh, can I put my charger in your cigarette lighter to charge my phone?" And he's like, "Yeah, no problem." But the thing about it was. Reason why I got that question answered to me by another student. He's like, "Hey, I live in the hood, man. Do you think this is going to work in the hood?" I said, "If it works in Africa, where the guy's going to go down there and is waving people down, <laughs> it doesn't have no. running running water or no facilities or whatsoever, and they have smartphones. Yeah, I think it's going to work in the hood." But to kind of bring that story back around, what this guy actually ended up doing is he ended up building. Um, uh, cell phone charger charging stations that were solar powered for these people or whatnot. So that was kind of a cool story. That he shared, man. And that's what he did with that's his cool. knowledge. So I love absolutely. Those so I love what those it shows, shows is taking the initiative to move forward in an, in an area that most people would probably think it wouldn't work. Will be. And then on top of that, yeah. he identified another opportunity. Right. You yeah. know. So taking the step forward, pushing through your fears. If you remember from one of our other uh, webinars, we always talk about fear. I love this word because it is false evidence appearing real. You're putting up roadblocks in front of yourself, preventing yourself from taking action. Fear is not real. It's false evidence. Yeah. So when you take the steps to move forward past that, you'll be surprised at what you see on the other side, the exactly. opportunities that you never even would have seen. And that's a perfect story to illustrate right. that. So yes, it will work where you are. I promise you that. Um, What's the next one? The other big one is when it comes to training, oh, I have to have training, right? Yes, you do. But I need to do some sort of hands-on. I need to be there in the classroom, you know, this, that, and the other. And this is promulgated all through the industry right now. And I can tell you, we've literally trained hundreds of students, hundreds. That we've never, actually probably thousands that of we've, online students. That we've never personally met yeah. face to face. And right. they do well. They do well. And we've never met them. They were able to do this online. Yes, you can do it online. It's so easy and so flexible that it makes no sense sometimes to travel. Obviously, I'm still a person for certain things. If it makes sense to do it face to face and I can do it, I enjoy that. Right. There's certain benefits you get out of that. But don't let that be an obstacle. Right. This is all about roadblocks in case you haven't noticed that. Because what we see what stops people from really achieving their dreams right. is their inability to take the step forward because they put a roadblock up instead of just maneuvering around it. And this one is so huge because, you know, there's not, first of all, we're the only school in the industry that's licensed. But even if you were to go to a training center, there's not typically training centers that are close by. It can be really expensive to travel. It's hard to get away. It's not necessary. There's benefits to it that we'll, we'll talk through in a minute. Right. But it's not necessary. Do not let it hold you back. It is so easy, especially now with our virtual platform, right. where we're doing this. But the difference is you're doing it right back with us. Well, I'll give you one example of exactly what Josh is saying, too, because we get we often get students who have either taken training from us before or taken training elsewhere, somewhere else, who actually comes back, back all the uses time. the online system that we actually have, the training, which Josh is alluding to, and they take it to the next level with that assistance. Actually, they actually receive training and a type of training and uh, benefits and better training, if you will, than they did in the classroom. Because I could tell you a couple of things about the classroom, and I just want to hit this really hard because classroom is where my domain is. Well, that's your passion. That's too. my passion. Yeah. And the classroom, guys, the classroom is great because it gives you that practical that Josh is talking about. But what you need to understand about the classroom is the classroom just sets a baseline. It doesn't really give you proficiency. It doesn't give you a lot of understanding about what is needed to be uh, effective, what is needed to be some of these things that we talked about to separate yourself. So don't put all of your eggs in the classroom. The classroom is good because it baselines. It says, okay, this is what I need to work on to get better. 
but it's not necessary in order to get to that same level. And like Josh has said, we've had multiple people, multiple people, if not thousands of people, literally yeah. actually take online training and be very profitable and very successful in this industry. So that's a blocker. That's a lot of times because it's technical. You know, people feel like it's technical. They feel like they need to be there and actually do it. It's not the case. You don't have to. It's great. And I'm not saying it isn't. Because we actually offer it. Actually, right. you know, that's one thing we're going to talk about a little bit later. But it's not a necessity, especially for you guys who haven't started yet. As a matter of fact, I would suggest that you start right where you are. And that's what I would suggest. But and you know, if you want to take that uh, approach, like I did with the gaming consoles, get the online training, you know, and go out there and really. Man, we have use your of, customers phones yeah. to start doing the we, repairs. We've actually I had mean, quite a few students do that. That, you know, that yeah. alone actually save even if really even if you mess up a phone or get, even got to replace a phone, you don't have to buy them a new phone, you can get a used phone or whatnot just for example, but typically it saves you money anyways cuz all the travel costs and all these things that you got to that you got to do, it's still less expensive and you get on the job real you world Tony training. Look. Yeah, so. You blasted across. Yeah, yeah I, I did. Yeah, across. exactly. And, you know, Tony, I, I actually, I think I've talked to you a couple of times. You know, I feel bad for Tony. You know, he said he took some training uh, from a training center in New York um, and then went back to, to try to get some help and some support resources from them. Not there anymore. They disappeared. You know, yeah. I, that's the thing with this industry. It really does. It, it works on the school side too, guys, right? Because it's so easy and so low cost to get into to do repairs. The next thing that a lot of people try to do because they're struggling doing repairs, they try to get into the training and think that that's the easier road. Right. And they find out real quickly that this is actually not any easier right. than doing repairs. You know, so yeah. you need those right support resources. Right. You need to have that team behind you that's yeah. going to be there for you.